Welcome back folks to Ruthless Metal. In today's video we're going to talk about the Big Four of Thrash Metal. The term the Big Four was coined by the press sometime way back in the 80s. And I'm not exactly sure who coined the term, but it has stuck with us for a very long time now. And the Big Four is of course Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer and Anthrax. Four American thrash metal bands that all experienced some success in the mid to late 80s. And that's the reason why these four bands got lumped together under this Big Four tag. Simply because they were the four best selling thrash metal bands back in the mid to late 80s. And Metallica was of course the biggest out of the four, but Megadeth, Anthrax and Slayer also had some success. And there were some ties between them. Dave Mustaine for example was an old member of Metallica and Kerry King of Slayer played live with Megadeth back in the early days. But they didn't get together and play live all four of them until the 16th of June in 2010. That historic event took place in Warsaw, Poland at the Sony Sphere Festival. They did however do 13 more concerts, most of them in Europe, but also two in the United States. One thing that always comes up when the Big Four discussions gets going is, why does these four bands deserve to be in this Big Four club? Why aren't Testament one of them? They actually kept releasing thrash metal records when some of the other Big Four bands moved on from playing thrash. Or why not Exodus? They were one of the true pioneers of this style. Or what about Overkill? They've always been so consistent. Or maybe even the Nuclear Assault. It all seems a bit unfair to me. And why is it only American bands that are part of this club? I mean bands like Sepultura, Vyvod, Creator or Artillery could perhaps have been a part of it if they were from the United States. And one could also argue that Metallica hasn't played Thrash for the last 30 years or so. So why are they still in this exclusive club? And I mean Slayer has retired, so how could they still be in it? And I'm not sure if I would label some of the more recent Megadeth and Anthrax albums as Thrash. And in Germany, Creative Destruction, Sodom and Tankard have been labeled as the German Big Four or the Teutonic Big Four. And these German bands came together in 2012 and released a split EP. I saw Creative Destruction and Sodom when they toured together in 2002. Back then it was just the Big Three because Tankard wasn't included. And why is Tankard part of the German Big Four and not Holy Moses? They were around several years before Tankard for example. And the same can be said about Living Death. They released their debut album as early as in 1984. And bands like Assassin and Accuser would probably want to be in the discussions as well. Or what about bands like Vendetta, Paradox, Angel Dust, Mekong Delta, Exhumer and Death Row. There has been similar discussions about the Canadian scene with Razor, Annihilator, Vivad and Sacrifice being labeled as the Canadian Big Four. And I guess that Anvil and the Exciter hasn't been flashy enough to be one of the Canadian Big Four. Even though like half of Voivod's discography could be labeled as progressive metal, more so than thrash. And the Brits also had a few bands, and these four could have been their big four, even if none of them sold that many records abroad. I've also seen a lot of discussions about who the next big four will be. Havoc, Municipal Waste, Warbringer and Evil has been put forth. But I don't know if they are much bigger than Vector, Bounded by Blood, Gamma Bomb and Toxic Holocaust for example. But let's get back to the original Big Four. The Big Four tag has always been a way for Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth and Anthrax to gain a bigger audience by being lumped together under this unifying tag. And it has definitely worked out for them. And you see these endless Big Four discussions online in more or less every group that are dedicated to thrash or metal. And for me, it's a bit exhausting and pointless. If it's based on how many records they've sold, then Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer and Anthrax are the Big Four. And that's the end of that discussion. But honestly, I'm tired of all these Big Four discussions. When thrash is something that you've been interested in more than a few weeks, the endless Big Four discussions gets a bit tiring. 
Plus, I really don't see why Exodus, Testament or Overkill should be anything less than a Megadeth or an Anthrax, for example. I mean, when did we metal fans start to care about how many units a band could move? Is that how we determine if a band is good or not? By those standards, Poison is a better band than Slayer, for example. And I think that most of my viewers would object to that. It's certainly not just talent that makes a band big. Having a good label behind you makes it easier to get noticed. And the image could be the difference between a band making it or not. Let's take Megadeth and Overkill for example. More people are familiar with Megadeth, so obviously Megadeth is going to get written more about in the magazines and so. But when it comes to the talent of both bands, I would say that both of them have delivered some high quality thrash over the years. So I personally think that the big four tag is bullshit. It's boring and rather meaningless, but here I am making a video about it. Simply because I felt like the topic needed to be addressed. Thrash should be something more than just the endless discussions about the big four. And it kinda cements these bands as the best bands of the genre. And that the other bands were somehow inferior, which they really aren't. Sure, it could have been a way for new fans to discover an Anthrax or a Slayer back in the day. But discoverability through the big four tag is probably not a big thing anymore. Since the introduction of the internet back in the mid 90s. Plus, they didn't have that much in common more than them playing thrash during the peak of the genre's popularity. There were some members moving between the bands early on, but they were from different parts of the country. Anthrax up in New York, and the other three down in San Francisco and Los Angeles. So what it really comes down to is that it's just a PR trick to lump these bands together. And it really don't matter who anyone thinks belongs there or not, since it's based on sold records and all, with all four of them selling 10 million or more worldwide throughout their careers. And all of them had some huge albums released around the same time. Master of Puppets, Peace Cells, Among the Living and Rain in Blood all came out around 86 and 87. And to be honest, there wasn't much talk about the Big Four before they actually got together and toured in 2010. Sure, it was a thing before that, but it was rarely talked about as a thing before the bands actually decided to get together and do that tour in 2010. And since then, it seems like it's the only thing that we Thrash fans talk about, and frankly, I'm tired of it. But now I want to hear your opinions on the endless Big Four discussions. Are you tired of hearing about the Big Four, or do you think that it's an interesting topic that still holds its place in the metal community? And since we're on the topic, let me know who would be in your Big Four down in the comment section below. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more thrash and heavy metal content. The channel has been in somewhat of a slump lately, so your interactions goes a long way. And if you want to go the extra mile, then you can order some cool metal shirts through the Ruthless Metal Store. Or you can always become a patron like the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And that's all for now, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.